Hey, good morning, New Life Church. My name is Michael Hogue. I'm from the Hebrew Springs campus. Uh, we are continuing this series where we are walking through the book of Jude. Uh, now, Jude, it's a short book, and today we're going to look at one verse, and guess what? It's a short verse, too. So we're going to be in Jude 1, verse 22, and it says, Be merciful to those who doubt. That's it. That's the whole verse. That's all we're looking at today is that one little section. Be merciful to those who doubt. Uh, now, that's from the NIV. And I love the way that the NLT puts it. It says, and you must show mercy to those whose faith is wavering. Now, just a kind of a recap. I know we've talked about this, but it's important to understand that this book of Jude, this is a letter written to a church uh, who had some troubles. Uh, they talked about, or Jude wrote about some people who were uh, indulging in sexual immoralities, bringing corruption to the church. A few verses back, he talks about those who uh, cause division in the church. And this, this section right here, these last few verses is like the final charge. This is like the final plea that Jude has to the people. And he says to be merciful to those who doubt. Uh, now it's very clear who, what we're talking about with this wavering faith, we are talking about people in the church. Okay, not saying that we don't need to have mercy to those outside of the church, but in this particular context, he is talking about being merciful to those whose faith is wavering. Remember, there's a lot of things that's happening at this church, a lot of division that's being caused. And while I don't think it's specifically pointed at these people who are causing the division, I think it's they're definitely not excluded from it. But through this, it has caused confusion, it has caused hurt, it has caused division, people are falling away, people aren't sure what to believe. And Jude is pleading to the church to be merciful to those people, to have mercy. Now that phrase, have mercy in the Greek is eleo. Um, and it means obviously to have mercy, but it means to help one afflicted and seeking aid. This is a compassionate action. I know all the time we hear mercy is us not getting what we do deserve and grace is us getting what we don't deserve. And that's true. Uh, but I think sometimes it's a little bit of an oversimplification. This term, uh, have mercy, we see it all through the New Testament. As Jesus was walking through the crowds, we have uh, these these people who are, are sick and hurt and blind, uh, one of them, even like a relative, is demon-possessed, and they're crying out to Jesus. They're saying, Son of David, have mercy on me. This isn't just, hey, I want you to pity me. Hey, feel sorry for me. Or No, no, no. This is, I need you to do something that only you can. Uh, so this idea of having mercy on those whose faith is wavering. Like I said, this isn't a pity, this isn't a feeling, this isn't a letting them off the hook. No, this is a compassionate action. Okay, so I wanna talk about, I wanna spend the rest of my time, I wanna get real practical because maybe you're in here and you know somebody that this fits right right exactly where you're at. Maybe it's in, in your campus, maybe it's from your past, your, your, your church home that you grew up in, something, you see somebody who's hurt, somebody who has been hurt, something that was said, and they're in a place where their faith is wavering. How do you reach them? How do you have mercy on them? I'm gonna give you three quick, quick things that you need to remember. Number one, be patient. Be patient with them. You know, even, you know, when it talks about defining what love is, you know, love, agape, God's unconditional love. The first thing, it's patient. Love is patient. And, uh, you know, Jesus was patient with us. Jesus was certainly patient with the disciples asking questions over and over and over again. I mean, if you want to talk about how to win somebody and how to impact somebody, that's got to be the first thing. You know, I think of uh, this idea of like holding the flashlight as a kid and doing these tasks with your father and or, or some things that you're, you know, as your childhood, some of the, the things that I've seen in my past and things that I want to do in my future with my children, uh, start with a patient hand, with a, with a patient thought, a patient voice and a tone in my voice as well. So we've got to be patient. Uh, the other thing we need to do is we need to be loving towards them. An important thing to understand is that as you are loving towards them, uh, there is no room for offense. You, there's there's no room for a spirit of, of offense here. Uh, that's only going to make the situation worse. 
Uh, it's Now it's easy to get that way. It's uh, understandable to get that way because hurt people hurt people. So if this person is hurt and if this person is struggling, uh, this person, whatever the reason, whatever they're going through, they might say some things that are unkind. They might say some things that are hurtful and we just got to be patient with them. You know, Proverbs 17, nine says, whoever would foster love covers an offense, but whoever repeats the same or repeats the matter separates close friends. So we, we need to be loving towards them and we need to guard our hearts and our words from offense. And the last thing we want to do is we want to be welcoming to them. We're talking about hospitality. Um, that includes uh, being self-sacrificing, putting them their, them first, giving to things to them. I'm not talking about just like shower them with presents or something like that, but really take a concern for the things that they need over yours. Um, you know, Romans 12, 13 says, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality. But one of the key things with this also is to keep the door open. Um, and, you know, the enemy is working to steal, kill, and destroy. You know, it's, the Bible says he's prowling like a lion seeking to destroy. And unfortunately, people fall into this trap all the time. Uh, but if we're patient with them, if we're loving towards them, uh, if we're welcoming them towards them, uh, man, we're gonna we're gonna have an impact in helping to win them back to Christ, back into the place where they need to be, where they are uh, following Christ's example and walking in the path given to them. Love you guys, and we'll see you tomorrow.